your actions as a school official on the scene of a mercury spill are critically important to reducing the spill's impact. First, instruct everyone to stay where they are, then quickly size up the amount and the area of the spill and identify the people who are potentially exposed to mercury. Second, tell everyone to move away from the spill as quickly as possible, making sure that everyone avoids the spill area as they leave. Then those near or involved in the spill should have their shoes, clothing, or other items such as backpacks inspected for mercury. Leave any contaminated items in the spill area. Next, isolate or close off the room to minimize the spread of mercury vapors in the school. This action will include shutting air vents and closing doors and turning off the central air system to stop air circulation into and out of the spill area. Ventilate or air out the spill area as much as possible. Open windows and position fans to blow mercury vapors out of the building. Finally, never use a vacuum or broom to try to clean up the mercury. This breaks up mercury into small beads and will worsen the spread of the mercury. The size of a mercury spill is critical to determining how you respond to it. A small spill is one that you can clean up using your school's mercury spill kits. A large spill is one where you need to seek outside professional help to properly clean it up. If you are not sure whether a spill is small or large, call for professional help. Examples of mercury spills that are considered small are when a fluorescent light bulb, a small thermometer, or a similar object containing only a small amount of mercury breaks. Any larger amount of mercury spilled should be considered a large spill. However, keep in mind that even a small size spill can become a larger problem. Mercury tends to break into droplets when spilled, can spread easily, and can build up into tiny cracks, for example, between floor tiles. If the spill is not discovered right away, or there have been a number of people walking in the spill area potentially spreading the contamination, then it may be necessary to get professionals to help assess and clean up the spill. When a mercury spill occurs, especially one that is considered large, contact professionals who will provide guidance and technical support to clean it up. Keep in mind that if more than two tablespoons of mercury is spilled, the National Response Center must be notified. You should also contact the school's or school district's insurance carrier to see if mercury spill cleanup costs are covered. An important part of spill response planning and preparedness is getting to know the agencies and organizations that can assist in the event of a mercury spill. Call each agency or organization listed on the mercury contact sheet to identify the appropriate point of contact and discuss the support each can provide to you and your school if a spill occurs. EPA and or your state or local environmental agency can help you successfully complete a mercury cleanup and achieve the goal of protecting the health of students and school officials and get the school back in full use. It is important to hire contractors that have experience conducting mercury cleanups. If not done properly, the mercury contamination can be spread further, increasing the cost and time needed for the cleanup. Good, clear communication is important in the event of a mercury spill. Should a spill occur, students, school staff, parents, and community members will be concerned about any potential hazards posed by exposure to mercury, how it happened, what is being done, and what they need to do. Promptly inform the students and staff involved in and potentially affected by the spill. Give them information that enables them to act quickly to minimize the spread of mercury and to contain mercury-contaminated shoes, clothing, and personal and school items. 
If those affected by the spill have already left school grounds, they may have tracked mercury into school buses, cars, their homes, and other places. If the spill is large enough that it requires closure of part or all of the school during the cleanup effort, people will need to know about alternate class schedules and locations. Emails, texts, phone calls, and social media posts may also be effective when reaching students and staff outside of school hours or when contacting parents or guardians. For example, you should provide clear instructions for collecting, bagging, and delivering potentially contaminated shoes, clothing, and personal items to the school so the items can be tested and disposed of properly if found to be contaminated. Our district is very fortunate to have a communications department that interacts with the media on behalf of the district. Upon arrival at the school, the district communication person and I met with the principal to discuss the cleanup response by both the fire department and district staff, the possible signs and symptoms of mercury exposure, and the potential exposure that was experienced by the students and staff given that short time frame. This provided enough information for the principal and the office staff to generate a letter to send home with the students, reassure the staff, and allowed the district communication person to speak knowledgeably with the media. Having one person present dedicated to speaking with the media freed the principal from that task. One unanticipated communication issue the school administration had to handle was multiple phone calls from parents. The spill was directly adjacent to the cafeteria which is lined with floor to ceiling windows. As the students came down to the cafeteria for lunch, they sent pictures of the spill response to their parents.